Matthew 20, verses 17 to 28. We're looking at what, uh, what we're involved in here is, you know, the uh, putting on the mind of Christ. This piggybacks on the last story in a certain sense. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached Jesus with her sons and did him homage, wishing to ask him for something. He said to her, what do you, ask, what do you wish? She answered him, command that these two sons of mine sit, one at the right, the other at the left in your kingdom. Jesus replied, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I'm going to drink? They said to him, we can. He, rely, he replied, my chalice you will indeed drink, but to sit at my right and at my left is not mine to give but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard this, dun, 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 <laughs> they became indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt but it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you, you shall be your slave. Just so the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So this piggybacks on the last story, in a certain sense, that whole idea of servant. But it's interesting. Why did not the two brothers ask Jesus themselves? <laughs> Why did they send their mother? Why? Do we, a lot of times, not tell the person we have a problem with or want something from, we send somebody else? I, why, why do we do that? Not all of you, but why do we do that? Why can't we just be open enough to say what we need to say in all honesty to the people that we have something we need to say to ourselves, instead of getting it into the triangulation, if you would, that takes place. I've had people come to me and say, well, why, would you please go and talk to my wife about this? What, what, get me in the middle? <laughs> you know, the one who's in the middle, you know, usually is the one that gets sacrificed, you know. <laughs> So one of the things in the spiritual journey and putting on the mind of Christ, do you have the courage to come forward and say what needs to be said when it's something that's very important in your life that you need to share with the other person? Is, right, is, is at this time in your life, is there a situation where you can't do that? All right. If you can't do that, what's the next? The next step to me always is to pray that that may become a possibility. My brother used to have a saying. We argued about it quite a bit. He says, you never get in trouble for what you think, only in what you say. That's not true. That is not true. Because if you're thinking it, you're going to show it. The person senses it. Is that right? You can sense when a person's not really telling you what they really want to tell you. So it's, it's a good idea, really, to realize how important our thoughts are in this situation. I'm sure the mother was thrilled 
that she had the opportunity to ask it, and I'm sure she did it in all good, good spirit, but you know, thank God she put it out there, but why couldn't they put it out there? And that goes to guideline number three about thoughts. Thoughts lead to desires, desires lead to passion, passion leads to action. Thoughts lead to desires, desires lead to passion, passion leads to action. If we're going to change anything in our life, it's not by verbalizing it first, but to be very clear, what's the thought that's behind it? I often chuckle with people who in a certain sense will say, you know, mother always loved him best. You know, he's the son, you know. Uh-huh. So I always said, you know, why, why get angry at him? It wasn't his fault or her fault. So why don't you change the thought? And they said, well, how can we change the thought? Mother always loved him best, but she never had good taste. <laughs> To just drop a little seed of, of humor, for goodness sakes, in, into it. To free yourself of that thought, therefore eliminating the desire that Thanksgiving is coming up and we're going to have to be with them again. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And then the passion, by God, I hope they don't come. I hope they get sick or something like that. Or uh, what I like is I'm going to make sure I don't say anything. I'm going to keep my mouth shut this time. How long does that work? And then the possibility, because you haven't changed the thought, that you're going to say something, you know, that you're going to regret as time goes on or at that particular moment. So here we have the mom and her two sons. They have a thought. If they had thought it out, it wouldn't have been said, I think, because Jesus right away told them what they had to do. You're going to have to drink the cup that I'm drinking, but I have no, I have no ability, really, to give you a high place. So here we have that part. What about the ten getting so upset? Wouldn't you get upset? I wonder, you get upset He's seeing this end run that's going on. And many times, in a certain sense, we're caught off guard. I wonder how they, I wonder what they said after Jesus left the room. <laughs> you know, I wonder what they said to one another about these two, two poor guys. I wonder if they ever let them off the hook, you know? Yeah, don't give me that stuff. You remember 22 years ago when your mother spoke up for you? Oh, yeah, don't give me that stuff. <laughs> how we hold on to things and how the inner, in the, the, the drama really of relationships is, is, is quite, quite profound in many ways. So what do we have here? We have here, number one, thoughts are important. They are powerful. Imagine if your thought was, I truly want to consent to your divine presence in my action, in my life, wherever that might be, just, just however that might be. Just imagine that. If that thought is there and it's really important to you. It's going to blossom into a desire, a yearning, a yearning. Teresa of Avila has a wonderful story about her relationship with God. Said so He came like a hunter and put the arrow in his bow and he pierced my heart and no other loves mattered after that. That's that desire that leads to the passion. Passion that Mother Teresa had, even though she wasn't getting any lollipops from it, but there was dryness in her life. But she knew in her faith that this was, was 
what she should do to show her love for, for her God. Imagine that, 40 years and only feeling God's presence for about six weeks in her, in her life. And the action that came. But when that action came, there weren't any strings. That's the beauty. It was unconditional love to the best of her ability. And that can be true of you. Unconditional love. When the thoughts are clear. Do I get it? Amen? Amen. And then also, too, the dealing really of the, the disciples. I wonder, yeah, I guess, I guess they got over it. <laughs> because they went their own ways. The disciples scattered themselves around the world to do God's work. It didn't stop them. Many gave their lives as martyrs. They went and spread the word. I wonder if they healed their memories about that. You know, I wonder if it's, it's stuck. You know, we have childhood memories, don't we? You know, I, I wonder if we made peace with them or forgave whoever we had to forgive. You know, if you keep on finding yourself returning to tell a story, you know, about something that happened when you were a kid, if that keeps coming up, there's room for forgiveness here because it's still holding on to you. Oh, it doesn't bother me anymore, but if you keep mentioning it, it hasn't been entirely healed. So I hope those 10 had the opportunity looking back and forgave the mother and forgave their two buddies who were trying to pull an end to run about who gets the higher place. I hope they did. I hope you do. I hope I do. Let go of those memories that in a certain sense drag us down a little bit. Or in a certain sense, it's like the tire uh, on our car that really ha has this slow leak, this slow leak that never gets patched. And because of that, you're constantly having to stop and put more air in instead of just resolving the fact that this is a slow leak that's taken, you know, what's the saying? Taken the stuffings out of me, taken some of the air out of me. Slow leak just needs a little patch of forgiveness. So I invite you to close your eyes. You've heard what I've had to say. More important, what is the Spirit telling you about this, the whole area of um, being true to what you believe and speaking the truth? What is going on in your life about maybe family situations or business situations or church situations or whatever it might be? Is there, is there still stuff there that needs to be looked at and forgiven? You know, one thing that's in the mind of Christ, we always, our journey is always with other people. One thing's in the mind of Christ is the fact we are called to be servants. One thing that's in the mind of Christ is the fact that of harmony, you know. So if there is any disharmony, what do you want to do about it? If you're being called to be a servant like the waiter in situations that are hard right now, but you're present to what is going on, what do you want to ask for? Are your words what you want them to be? Like the rabbinical story, you know, once the feathers are out of the pillow, you can't track them down and put them back in again. 
How is the Lord speaking to you? Whoever exalts themselves will be humbled, but whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. Lord, help us trust in those words of freedom. And we pray this prayer in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.